You can get satisfied with good and good becomes the enemy of great. You can get satisfied with status quo and then status quo becomes the enemy of the fulfillment of destiny. You can become satisfied with having enough and then having enough becomes the adversary of more than enough. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon, the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. As I was in prayer this morning, the Spirit of the Lord uh, said this and shared this with me. And he told me to share it with you. I'll probably expand on it some this week. But in Isaiah 54, it says, enlarge, verse 2, it says, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Notice what it says, let them do it. In other words, this means that there might even be someone employed or someone that needs to be contracted to do it. God's saying, don't, don't, don't break the contract even though it doesn't look like stuff. Go ahead and... Uh, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Watch this. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Why? For you shall expand. Somebody needs to lift up their hands and say, I shall expand. And I'm not talking about waistline. Say it. I shall expand. Come on. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. Watch this. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Watch this. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Come on, lift up your hand and say, I will not be ashamed. Lift up your hands, for you will not be ashamed, neither disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. And as I was in prayer this morning, the Spirit of God prompted me to go to this, he began speaking to me. I knew where the verse was, and he highlighted these four words. You need to write these down because these are going to be thematic for you over this month and over about the next 90 days. In verse 2, he says, enlarge, stretch, lengthen, and strengthen. Enlarge, stretch, lengthen, and strengthen. Those are four prophetic words for you. We'll deal with that another time. But I needed to get it to you because it is a word in season. It's hot. It's, 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 there's still steam coming off that bread. I'm telling you, God spoke it to me this morning. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 1 is where I shall begin the reading of the word. Joshua 1 and verse 1. And I'm going to read a few verses here, so stay with me. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land. Everybody say, to the land. Say it again, to the land. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place 
that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Does have given sound like something that's going to happen or something that has happened? Sounds like something that has happened, right? Every place the sole of your foot will tread I, upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, uh, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Somebody say, I have territory. Come on, say it out loud. I have territory. I love it. Shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do. Everybody say the words observe to do. That you may observe to do according to the law or the word which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. I want you to hear God talking to his man about prospering, lest anyone would ever say to you, it's not God's will to prosper you. He says that you may prosper. Get it? That you may prosper wherever you go. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That literally means there, will never, there should never be a time where the word of God is not in your mouth. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do. Notice again that phrase, observe to do, is, 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 is written again in the same way. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Isn't it interesting that God says once you connect with me, it's not just me that makes you prosperous. You make you prosperous. By do, did, you, did you see that? It's not just God that prospers you. See, there's a lot of Christians who think, well, I'm born again now. I'm a, I'm, I'm a believer. Uh, I should be prospering. Many Christians are surprised when they are born again and their financial situation, their natural situation gets worse than it was before they were born again. And, and I've got the answer to that. It's very simple. The one that was funding you before, you're his adversary now. No smart general is going to keep funding his adversary. So when you switched kingdoms, you switched generals, and you switched where your supply comes from. And if you don't learn how to function in the, on how your new general, the Lord Jesus, supplies then you will see diminishment and not prosperity. I am not teaching on that today, but somebody needed it. Watch it. Uh, for, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers, in other words, that, that Joshua has just come from the presence of the Lord. So then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourself. For within three days, you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And I read a lot to you there. But I need you to get the context. Now, real quickly, go to Joshua chapter number 3. I'm going to read just the first five verses there. Go to Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 1. Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 1. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. He and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. 
So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Everybody say, go after it. Verse number four, yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now I read that those first 11 or so verses of chapter 1 and then went to chapter 3 and read the first five verses to connect the fact that Joshua has received instruction from the Lord that he is now executing before the people of God and instructing them the strategy, the information that he has received so that they, along with him, can fulfill the plan and purpose of God of them possessing the territory that God has given them in the promised land. The significance of crossing Jordan, it's very, in, very important that you understand this, the significance of crossing Jordan was that the moment they crossed Jordan, they were now in the territory that God had promised to give to Abraham some 400 years before the land that God had delivered them from the bondage of Egypt to possess according to the promise he made to Abraham. So get it, God is serious because he has made a promise that he has to fulfill and these are the people that he's going to use. So he is giving strategy. Now I want to talk about, if I was titling this, I would call it taking spiritual territory or taking your territory, taking your spiritual territory. And the, the, the passages are somewhat familiar, but God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. I was directed here by the Spirit of God. And you know, if you've been around me anytime, you know that those verses in chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, those are just verses I love because the instruction there is so powerful. I've preached from it many times. But the Lord quickened this in my spirit. And I know it is significant. I, I am, I'm eternally attracted uh, to uh, the gravity and the grandeur of this particular uh, chapter, this first chapter of Joshua. As a matter of fact, really the first six chapters of the book of Joshua catch my attention always. The, the weight uh, and the jeopardy of these moments arrest my attention and my imagination because uh, God opens Joshua chapter 1 by speaking to Joshua. You are actually taken into an intimate time of communion and prayer between God and Joshua, who is now the leader that God has selected and appointed to lead the children of Israel. And, and the weight and the gravity of this moment is so intense because in verse 2 of chapter 1, God opens his conversation with Joshua by saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. He, 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 Moses is dead. Now, no one needs to know that Moses is dead, and no one would know that Moses is dead more than Joshua. Joshua had served Moses. He was Moses' assistant. The Bible says that Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So Joshua is aware of the fact that he is carrying something he got from Moses and having been Moses' assistant and Moses' minister for many years, Joshua of everybody in uh, the camp of Israel is aware that Moses is gone because his mentor, his life coach, his, 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 his apostle, his prophet is gone and now he is having to deal with the fact it's on me. <laughs> so, so, so the weight of that is significant and, and the setting, the setting is significant because in Joshua 1 and verse 6, look 
at verse number six. I want you to get the gravity of it. In Joshua 1, 6, God tells Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Watch this. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give. So get what he says. He said, now you are going to be the one to take them in and divide this. He's got 12 tribes, actually nine and a half, because two and a half have received their inheritance on the east side of Jordan. We'll look at that in just a moment. But, jo oh goodness. but Joshua now has the spiritual responsibility of teaching a people who have not warred how to war. Remember, these were slaves. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, at least their parents were slaves. This is the generation that was raised up after it. They've seen no warfare. They've been 40 days, uh, 40 years rather, uh, in uh, in, uh, in the wilderness, they've taken no battle. They've been supernaturally sustained. Joshua now has the responsibility of making this ragtag group of consumers an army <laughs> and, and having them take territory. Then, and you know how we do when a powerful leader has left and then the next guy comes up, everybody's looking at him with the side eye, wondering if he's got the goods, wondering can he do it, uh, does he have the wisdom, you know, and even people who didn't like Moses were talking about, you know, when Moses was alive, we, you, you know how people get. So Joshua is dealing with all of that as a spiritual leader, not to mention the fact he is going into a land that he has not seen, and God is telling him he is going to have to divide this for millions of people to come in to what God has promised them. Whoa, that's heavy. Heavy stuff we're talking about here. And so the setting is that he's going to divide the land, he says in verse number six, which God swore to their fathers to give. So he's got urgent situational uh, things on him. He has the fulfillment of prophetic destiny on him. He has the expectation and the weight of all these people upon him. And then he has another significant battle that he has to win here that is implied but is not seen unless you understand the context and read the scripture. He must provoke a passion in the majority, this nine and a half tribes who have not received their land, their houses, their vineyards, he must provoke a passion in them to possess what God has promised him. Now get it, they have been supernaturally fed by manna for some 40 years. They have been led by a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of uh, a pillar of a cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. They've had this supernatural awe environment. They haven't really had to do much to live. God had been supplying, protecting, providing for them. And now Joshua is telling them, okay, now you are going to have to, if you will, cease from being a welfare state and get up and go and possess what God has for you. Now, what you're going to possess is better than how you're living now, but you're going to have to fight. You, 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 uh, you're not listening to me. You, you, you're going to have to fight. So he's got to provoke them out of a sort of satisfied complacency. You understand, you can get satisfied with good, and good becomes the enemy of great. You can get satisfied with status quo, and then status quo becomes the enemy of the fulfillment of destiny. You can become satisfied with having enough, and then having enough becomes the adversary of more than enough. The fact of the matter is that in order to get what is to come, you often have to make a decision to leave what is. And that requires something of a work in the spirit. So Joshua has to do that. But not only that, he must also arrest the mentality of a settledness and a complacency in the two and a half tribes who have already gotten some 
of their inheritance east of Jordan. If you look at verses 12 through 15, go there very quickly. Verses 12 through 15. If you look at verses 12 through 15 of Joshua chapter 1, it says, to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke saying, remember the word which Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you saying, the Lord your God is giving you rest and giving you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But you shall pass over before your brethren armed, all you mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you, and they also take the possession of the land which the Lord has given them. Now, what is happening here? you got to get this. Two and a half tribes, Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh had received their land on the east side of Jordan. So they had their Lexus, they had their, uh, they had their wine, uh, uh, you know, vineyards, their olives, they had their trees, they had their houses, they were set, they were cool. But the rest of the children of Israel, their inheritance was on the other side of the Jordan. So the temptation was, yo, I'm good, yo dog, I'm, I'm straight. Y'all go fight, peace, see you on the other side. But if you read your Bible, the Bible declares in, first, uh, in Numbers 32, verses 1 through 21, I won't go there. When Moses gave the children of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh that land on the east side of Jordan, he said to them and had them take an oath. He said, I'm giving this to you, but, you, but when it's time to cross over, you're going to have to leave this and go help your brothers get theirs. He said, if you don't leave and go help them, you will not live in peace where you are. In other words, he said, you cannot get complacent just because you got yours. Because Allah borrashan, because this kingdom is not just about you getting yours. It is about you helping all of your brothers and sisters come into theirs. Corporate destiny, corporate fulfillment, everybody having it. And this is why God wants to bless so that you can be a blessing. So now the stage is set and God exhorts Joshua to ready him for his assignment. I need you to lay your hands up on yourself and tell them you are ready now for your assignment. I don't want you to miss the fact that the, 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 the law during this time of pandemic, the law in activity has not just been to give you and I a sabbatical. It has been to prepare us to rise up to another phase of taking territory. We are crossing over something in the spirit right now. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. We are crossing over something in the spirit and the atmosphere and the environment is about to change. Not just a lessening of the pandemic, but a raising of the standard of God. An increasing intensity of God's power to save, heal, and deliver is going to be manifest in the lives, hands, and feet of his children everywhere. And so it's time to take territory. That's what God is speaking here to Joshua about. And so he exhorts Joshua to ready him for his assignment. Uh, and I believe in that exhortation, there are some things that you and I need to know and possess, put in our arsenal for the journeys and the victories that God has in store for us individually and corporately. And here's what I saw as the Spirit of God dealt with me about this, that God, for our purposes, reveals in his exhortation and dealing with Joshua, in Joshua chapters 1, 2, and 3, at least three principles, prophetic principles, that you and I need to have and we need to possess. And if you're taking notes, you need to write these down because you're going to need them in the coming days starting tomorrow. Watch it. Watch it. Joshua chapter 1 and verse number three is the principle, please hear this, the principle of prophetic 
inheritance. Write it down. The first principle God reveals is this principle of prophetic inheritance. He's saying, you're going to have to know this. You've got to understand this if you're going to take the spiritual territory that I have for you, take the physical territory that I have for you, and live in the purpose that I have ordained for you. You're going to have to understand the principle of prophetic inheritance. Now, what does that mean? It, the principle that is required to take that which has already been given to you by word, but now must be acquired by you in deed. It is already, that's what I mean by prophetic inheritance. It has already been given to you by word, but it now must be apprehended in deed or in fact. So, God says to, to to Joshua, get it again. Look at verse number, uh, 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 let, me, let me start at verse number one. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. Who's talking? The Lord is talking to the son of Nun, Moses' sister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now watch this. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Everybody say, go over this Jordan. Say it again. Go over this Jordan. Say it again, go over this Jordan. Now again, Jordan was the river, the natural physical barrier between the land of Israel's sojourn and wilderness and the land of their promise and their inheritance. The moment they crossed Jordan, they are now in physically, they have their feet on the land God swore to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 to give them uh, and God is about to fulfill that word. So there's a prophetic promise hanging over their heads and as far as God is concerned, his word is settled in heaven and it's done. So he, he says, tell them, cross over this Jordan, you and all these people, watch this, to the land which I am giving to them the children of Israel. Now look at verse number three. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine, and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network. The urgency to accept Christ Jesus as your Savior and Lord is real because until you have accepted him, uh, you're in your own melodrama. You're in your own novella. You're in your own story. And you're trying to write it as you go. The moment you step into Christ, the plan is written. Now you don't have to try to make it work. You just have to discover what has already been set out.